So industries that have undergone um, a transition from one business model to another, massive disruption, how do those industries cope? For many of us in the magazine industry, it's something we're still going through. For people that are in the music business, uh, that's a disruption that's already happened, and many companies have now come out of the other side with business models that do work and are successful. One of those is uh, Vivendi in France, and now to tell us all about uh, their story and what publishers can learn from the music industry. Please welcome its chief executive, Arnaud de Poifontaine. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Good morning. I see some familiar face. Hey, how are you, Chris? Barry? Good, good friend this morning. So, um, what can I say? Interesting signs. And uh, as always, a very great pleasure just to get any opportunity to reconnect with an industry uh, which I spent nearly 20 years of my life and uh, we're now on my new job and uh, journey. Very happy to share with you a few thoughts. So, I'm truly uh, honored uh, to address here some of the most influential leaders uh, in a sector that is so close to my heart, publishing. As uh, some of you may know, uh, uh, when I worked at EMAP PLC and then at Erst uh, Corporation, I went on to a journey which it seems to me started uh, the last century. But whether you are in magazine or book publishing or in the music industry, or in the movie business or video gaming, one thing holds true, content is king. This was the case at Erst, that was the case at EMAP, and it is the case at Vivendi. Our story at Vivendi is relevant to what you're facing in publishing, I think, because we have seen a radical transformation in the way audiences consume our content. The shift to wireless consumption, downloading and streaming has changed the way we get our content to the end user. This is true whether you're watching one of our blockbuster movies such as, let's be intellectual this morning, Bridget Jones' Baby, or whether you're listening to Drake or Rihanna, two of our artists signed to Universal Music, or if you're playing Asphalt Extreme, which I hope you do, on your mobile, one of our video games. In every part of our business at Vivendi, our content and services have been digitized for an audience that gravitates to a pick and mixed model. I would like to illustrate this idea with a short video showing what we do. So now you understand that when my children ask me, what do you do for a living, uh, Dad? I say, I watch TV, I listen to music, and I play video games. 
Uh, like no other, like, sorry, other majors in the entertainment industry, we have adapted the way content is distributed by Vivendi subsidiaries that range from Universal Music Group to Canal Plus, TV and Cinema and Gameloft in mobile gaming. To feed the audience pipeline, we invest more, two more than 2.5 billion euros in content each year. In recent years, Executives from the entertainment industry who talked about the digital revolution often did so with a sense of grief, a sense of mourning something that was passing. There was a sort of sheer pain for the, L, for the old, predictable, analog world of content distribution. In some respects, it has been a painful experience. Certainly, the media and entertainment industry is less predictable. Old models of advertising and cover price have been turned upside down. But today, I would like to state that our sense of shared pain should be replaced with a sense of shared opportunity. This opportunity can be summed up in five words. Profusion, access, personalization, aggregation, and community. Let me take them in turn. Profusion. There is a bigger marketplace for content than ever before. More content is in circulation. For example, more than 100 hours of video are downloaded on YouTube every minute around the world. Our challenge is how to change, to charge for all this content. But the opportunity to reach mass audiences has, has never been greater. And watch the space because there is another brand that is going to get more and more famous, Dailymotion. If you have any interest about Dailymotion, please come back to me. I will tell you more in due time. Second, access. We can reach audiences on multiple devices at any time and at in any place. Whether in the home, on the move, live, recorded, online, offline, on demand, by subscription, on one or more screens. Since the start of this decade, daily consumptions of media has increased by an average of 30 minutes every year. Content consumption is rising. Third, personalization. Consumers are packaging up the content they want in formats they prefer. In the music business, an estimated two-thirds of the songs that are streamed come from playlists. In video, 75% of programs watched on Netflix are watched as a result of a recommendation. This means we can target our customers in a more informed way. Then, aggregation. Many audiences go to familiar digital hubs to access this content, whether the American GAFA, of course, but also the Chinese BAT, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent. We all have an opportunity to repurpose our content for these distribution networks, whether it's a 1.7 billion monthly users on Facebook or the 800 million people using the Tencent messaging service WeChat. Then, community. We are living in an era of sharing in which content is circulating around social networks on a massive scale. On Google, it is estimated that about 30% of sites visited after a search contain cultural property. Our challenge as an industry, whether in publishing or video content or music, is how to secure a sustainable pricing model or effective charging mechanism. We have no choice but to adapt. Look at the music industry. When first confronted by digital distribution, it decided to prosecute rather than innovate. Once the music industry offered digital distribution models that were easier to use than pirate networks, the audiences followed. It has shown that an all-you-can-eat subscription model for streaming can work. Parts of this newspaper's industry has also shown that digital distribution is not the enemy, building useful revenues for their payrolls. We must change, because change is going to happen whether we like it or not. Winston Churchill, a great author as well as a remarkable politician, got it right when he said, if you don't take change by the end, it will take you by the throat. Nice statement. This was a lesson learned the hard way in the music industry. After years of selling physical products, vinyl, tapes, and CDs, 
It is now making useful revenues from streaming services. Ta -da -da, it's working. As this graph shows, music 15 years ago was the sale of a CD that you had to insert into a player in your home or car. Today, music is moving towards a subscription-based streaming service that allows you to listen to songs on the move without having to download them. The hard lesson was that the global recorded music market lost two-thirds of its value before it began making money out of a streaming and downloading. After a lost decade, recorded music returned to growth in 2015, due mainly to the popularity of subscription streaming offers such as Spotify, Deezer, and Apple streaming music. The number of paying subscribers in music reached 68 million in 2015, up from 41 million in 2014, and only 8 million in 2010. The rate of take-up has not been the same everywhere, and this applies particularly to the publishing industry, which needs time to adapt. In Germany, for instance, uh, for example, physical distribution still accounts for 70% of recorded music sales, against 30% for streaming. This is the opposite in Sweden. But whatever the differences, the main trend is here. Having still been a niche market a few years ago, subscription streaming is in the process of becoming a mass market capable of recreating long-term value for the music industry. However, the creative industries do not all have the same degree of digital maturity. Printed news media has been slower to adapt. We can see this in France, where print media represent more than 1% of GDP in France in the uh, 80s, and less than 20 years later, represented no more than 0.37%. It's both a challenge and an opportunity to become more digital. Of course, we have to find economic models that work, but the overall content market place is still growing. The value of the global entertainment and media industry is expected to rise 1.55 trillion in 2015 to 1.93 trillion in 2020. This equates compounds annual growth of 4.4% and most of the growth is digital. Of course, it is easy to say that we must all get on the digital bandwagon. Today, we all share the anxiety of just how to do that. The lesson at Vivendi is to make content even better, even more premium and higher quality. In an era of ultra-high definition viewing and listening, audiences will gravitate to the very best content. The same must be true for publishing. At a time when there is more and more content and much of its poor quality, then audiences will gravitate to brands and content they can trust. If enough audiences gravitate to quality content, then advertising will follow and tiered subscription charges can be introduced. High quality content also strengthens the brand position. Indeed, some artists, some authors are becoming brands in their own right. From GK Rowling to Jay-Z, great artists are becoming valuable franchises, whatever format their content is distributed in. Our job as content companies, as publishers, as distributors, is to maximize the audience access for these artists and hopefully to make a margin along the way. Audience access is moving in one direction, to wireless devices. For all of us, the future is mobile. We must make our content ready for smartphones, which the number of such devices expected to grow from 4 billion in 2015 to more than 6 billion in 2020. Of course, the printed world it will not disappear. There will always be books and magazines, just as there is still a market for vinyl records and DVDs. But the generational shift to screen-based consumption is inexorable. We must shift as well. We must all get better at data management, at producing content specifically for mobile, which we are doing at Vivendi, and by forging more targeted, more intimate relationships with our customers. I've tried to send a message of opportunity this morning. Of course, there are major challenges ahead. 
Yes, there are some giants out there, many of them based in California, who pose an existential threat. Yes, our audiences are becoming less loyal and more promiscuous in their consumption habits. But our luxury and our privilege as creative content companies is the skill of identifying, managing, and marketing great talents. Whether you are in music or video games, in TV or films, in newsprint or magazines or books, the ability to nurture and develop content remains a prized asset. Our challenge and opportunity is to apply those content skills to smart digital distribution. If we get that right, the best is yet to come. I wish you a very enjoyable and compelling summit, and ich wünsche Ihnen eine erfolgreiche Konferenz. Thank you very much. Oh, no, thank you. Will you take questions? I'm very happy to take questions. So we have a moment. So if there is a question, uh, please do uh, raise your hand, and uh, we'll come to you. Yes. Uh, we have a microphone just coming around. May I introduce you to the very famous uh, Barry McLeanay, founder of the Great Empire magazine and boss of the PPA in the UK. Barry McLeanay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Otto. Um, Barry McLeanay, PPA. Um, you mentioned Spotify quite a bit, which is where I consume most of my music now, and, and which has been so critical in, in, in helping to salvage music industry revenues. And I know that we have some elements of that with, with Readly or with uh, Next Issue Media, whatever it is now called in the US. But with your experience in magazines, can you honestly see Hearst and Condé Nast and Time Inc and Springer, uh, can you see them all combining and do you think we should all combine to offer up a uh, one size fits all menu? to the public of magazines? Do you think that is the next big thing? Well, uh, thank you, Barry, for this uh, question. I think, you know, the good thing in life is that you're always right with the benefit of hindsight. And I joined Vivendi. Uh, uh, I moved back from London to Paris now nearly three years ago. And at the time, uh, the music industry, our universal music group, which is the worldwide leader in music with a 34% market share, uh, at the time, the value of the business was 8 uh, billion uh, euro. Uh, now, when you read analyst uh, report, very interesting reading, uh, we are around 12. And when you see the kind of a forecast of this industry, some would say that the true value is 25. So we can see this kind of a really uh, re-engineering and rebirth on industry, which went uh, in the doldrum. Okay, and very quickly, 2015, as I said, was a kind of a turning point, and now going from strength to strength. Why? Access to the customer, worldwide approach, moving from a product type of consumption to a more service-led type of business model. And to your question, yes, I think that the future will be from the big names and, I mean, the industry to overcome uh, a certain way of thinking about the business and to get a much greater alignment as regards to how can we, as an industry, open uh, the accessibility to a much greater and wider audience. So, yes, the Condé Nast, the Hearst, the uh, uh, Lagardère, the, and so on, and so on, the Axel Springer and, uh, and uh, Grunier and Yard of this world, yes, should get a kind of approach to back worldwide type of platform to provide the customer with the possibility to get access to the different brands in a way which is very uh, like uh, Spotify. It doesn't mean that it's going to kill the kind of a traditional distribution of physical product, because I do think that the physical type of uh, connection you have with a magazine is something which is remaining very strong. I think that this is creating brands which are still supported by the advertising uh, uh, market. But you can then, with a kind of a alignment of the, of the industry and some competitors to join forces to get and to provide the support to that kind of a distribution initiative is part of, in my view, I think is a, a, a will provide the industry to uh, grow again. Thank you. 
Uh, if we have no more questions, but right there, one over there, if you make it fairly brief, sir, that would be good. Fairly brief is a typical British understatement. So <laughs> yeah, can you make it quick, means please? really short. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Agustino Fontevecchia from Editorial Perfil from Argentina. Uh, you mentioned Google and Facebook uh, indirectly, very directly. Uh, at one point, that's a big risk, and you said you should be on the platform to reach as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little more about how you, you can be on that platform but not be a slave of their monetization models? Well, I think that... Uh, uh, Briefly. Uh, when you are... <laughs> yeah, I will be quick. <laughs> a, I think that uh, what is going to be the world on our business in five years' time, I don't know. What I know is that our duty is to get some optionality. And I think that if you put all your eggs in the same basket, the baskets being the GAFA, well, at the end of the day, you're becoming slaves. As a matter of fact, I'm really stubborn because if there is one common element between every content owner as regard to YouTube slash Google, is that what is sure is that you will never make any money. Okay, so there is kind of a wake up call and a need to be able to become more in control of our destiny. And I do think that there should be initiatives to be able to create alternative. I am absolutely ashamed by the lack of capacity of European countries in Brussels to be able to get a kind of a common approach to make the kind of a player worldwide, player strong enough to find alternatives. So because I'm optimist and I'd rather see the glass half full rather than the glass half empty, I think that it's not too late, but you have to find an uh, uh, alternative. And some of you may have noticed that I gave the name of Dailymotion, which is the second uh, uh, streaming uh, platform in the world behind uh, YouTube, so far behind, should I say but watch the space because Dailymotion is going to be relaunched before summer as a kind of a very compelling proposition to be able to be very content owner friendly. I must say for full disclosure that Dailymotion is, uh, uh, as a shareholder called Vivendi, we own 90% of this streaming platform, but that's an example that it's not all doom and gloom. We need to find alternative. We need to get in a position to be in control of our destiny and our future. And no, I disagree with the point that it is too late as regard to what happened in the US. Fantastic companies, but when you see Mark Zuckerberg two weeks ago saying that now Facebook is a quasi-media group, and I would just uh, uh, give, it's worth reading the red airing for the IPO of uh, uh, Snapchat, which is defining itself as a media group. You know that the kind of a size of the prize is very big, but we need to move in having combined approach to be able to create alternative. Long answer, but I think that it was worth it. And I'm still in time, by the way. One <laughs> minute and 45. <laughs> and it's a great answer. Can I ask you please to thank Arnaud? Marvellous presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye. Cheers.